Hi, this time we will be taking apart the old printer. So, let's start. Getting inside modern consumer electronics is not always straightforward. They are using nowadays a lot of clips instead of screws and sometimes even gluing th things down. Let's see if we can open this printer without having to break too much plastic. Yeah, that's not so easy, but I think now I know how it's put together. Let's see if I can take it apart properly. Now the last two screws and finally we are in. Hmm, as it looks the printer was quite heavily used. The sponge intended to collect the waste uh, from a uh, head cleaning is quite full. Let's first get the remaining printer ink out and the printing heads as well. Now we can proceed with the removing of the printer's interior out of the remaining casing. stuck on something, either I haven't removed all the screws or, or there is a clip somewhere. Hmm. Let's first remove the motherboard. As it looks now, it already can be pulled out. There isn't much here that can be easily reused, but for example on the lower right side there is a real-time clock chip and there is squared prom. Finally we got the main assembly out of the casing, well almost, as it appears it is some of the tubing is stuck to the bottom of the main casing. Let's now quickly remove the remaining sponges so that the whole disassembly process will not um, become a huge mess. As you can see taking apart the old inkjet printer can be really dirty. I think it's time to change the gloves for a pair of new ones. Now let's proceed with taking apart the main mechanical assembly of the printer. I will start this part by removing the head cleaning assembly which similar to the sponges will be full of um, old still probably wet ink. I'm wondering what this could be. It looks like a solenoid with a tube attached to it. Could it be something like a pump maybe? Okay, one more screw and we will have the mechanism out which is responsible for the movement of the head.
and here it is. Such assemblies have a few parts which can be reused very nicely. For example, the polished metal rod as well as the driving belt can be used to build a 3D printer, although you would need more of these parts than one inkjet printer can donate. Another thing that might be interesting is the linear encoder which measures the position of the printing head while it moves. If you don't have the right Torx screwdriver at hand, you can always help yourself using bar more barbaric methods. For example, you can hold the screw tight with a pair of pliers and then loosen it, such that when you later on fit some flatted screwdriver into, into it, it will be lo loose enough so that you can screw it out without breaking the edges of your screwdriver. Finally, the last piece we have to take apart is the head slide assembly. You have to be careful when removing the linear encoder ruler. Um, it's basically just a thin transparent tape with a lot of stripes on it. Usually the resolution is about 200 stripes per inch. This is the second part of the optical encoder. It is an infrared diode together with two photodiodes. When the stripes on the strip move along, it makes a signal similar to, for example, a mouse wheel. I'm wondering what this part is good for. I found this already in many other inkjet printers. Basically, there is a light emitting diode and a photodiode, and the assembly looks like it is uh, trying to detect the light which is um, reflected back by the paper. I don't know for what purpose. Maybe it is intended to detect where the edge of the paper starts. If you know, please let me know that in the comments. The printer is now in pieces, so we are done. I hope you enjoyed my video, if so, please thumbs up, bye!